And what is good, everyone? Welcome to another NBA Draft Film Session. I'm your host, Pranavish Free Raman. As always, make sure to go follow my Instagram, at Sports World Debates. If you have any thoughts, comments, concerns about any one of my takes, make sure to go tweet me at SWD281. And a new addition to the family, I am recently just started TikTok. So if you want to go check out my TikTok, at Sports World Debates, submit some of your hottest takes and leave me to respond to them in a quick 60 seconds make sure to go follow and comment in my TikTok. so with that being said we're going to get into the film review and we are going to be reviewing film on none other than memphis center james wiseman so let me give you a little bit of background context on james wiseman like i mentioned just a couple minutes ago he is a center and as he's seven foot one he's a big center with a big reach um, he's a defensive-minded center as well. We're going to get into all of that when we review the film. And a little bit of background context is he did only play three games in college because he was deemed inel ineligible by the NCAA. And in his three games, James Wiseman averaged about 20 points, 11 rebounds, and a .3 assists. But he did average three blocks a game, and he shot about a true, true, a true shooting percentage of 76 percent so in his three games in college he was statistically extremely impressive but we're going to break down the film see all the weaknesses he has in his games as well as the strengths what really stands out to us and so we're going to break two games of his we're going to break his last collegiate game which was against oregon and we are going to br break down his one of his high school games where he faced his best competition which was Evan Mobley and Rancho Christian. So with that being said, we're going to break down the first out of our two games, which is James Wiseman versus Oregon, which was his last collegiate game. So the game is just about to start underway. Here's the tip off. So he lost the tip off, but that's okay. So he's down below in the post. Right here, I already have an issue with this. I already see what I have an issue with right here. So right here. This guy right here with my cursor is at is about to make the pass to where James James Wiseman was supposed to be guarding. Instead, James Wiseman was looking at him. He was allowed to make an easy pass, and right here when you play this, he bites on the pump fake. He, this guy, number 33 on Oregon, is about to pump fake. James Wiseman is going to bite on it, which allows for the easy score and the foul. And the foul. That's just a horrendous defensive possession for James Wiseman. Um, it shows... A lack of control and poise and we're gonna see if that is a continuing problem for him moving forward all right he fills in the role in the post set the screen right here so we should see him cutting he, he does do a good job cutting but we need to see more off ball movement right here he's just staying stagnant in the post all right, that's what I'd like to see. Set the screen. So that was a, that was a pretty solid offensive play. He did all he could, moving off the ball, setting screens. The rebound. So right off the bat, I already know, um, based on his intangibles, that he's a great rebounder. It's one of his strongest strengths. So he's moving off the ball, cutting to the lane. Is that... An offensive foul? Yeah, that's an offensive foul on James Wiseman. So let's take a look right back at that play. So as they advance um, the ball down the court with Boogie Ellis running the point, James Wiseman's going to cut inside. He lowered that shoulder and that elbow, so that's going to be an offensive foul. So right now he already has two fouls, two fouls that he shouldn't have. One was on the first possession defensively where he bited on the pump fake, and another was just not having control on the offensive end with his shoulders and his elbow. So he needs to work on not picking up easy fouls because that's not going to bite in the NBA, especially when you're playing the most elite bigs in the world. So right here, you see the stat line. He already has he has five rebounds. We know he's a good rebounder, but he has two fouls in five minutes. That's just not something you want to see out of your top prospect. So 
And keep in mind, this guy was ranked number one coming out of high school, but he only played three collegiate games. This is his final one. Filling in the role. So, we've seen some um, flashes of being a good off-ball player, but we need to see a little bit more. That's a dunk he should have made. That's a dunk he should have made. I, um, most people won't criticize him right here for not making this dunk, but as a center, you should be able to put this ball back. If you know you want to put it back as a dunk, you put it back as a dunk, or you just grab the rebound and put it back up or dish it out because if someone's rated this high, they need to have better hands than this and put it in. So for his standards, I'm expecting more out of that play. I think that's the dunk he should have made. But he's going to the line, so he makes the most out of that opportunity. So that's not that big of a deal. He, he looks like he has good shooting form. Um, in college, he did shoot about... Um, if I'm, he did shoot about 70% from the free throw line, so, yeah, that's a miss, that's a miss, so, he does have promise to be a good free throw shooter, but, um, I think that, that will develop over time as he gets into the NBA, I'm not really concerned about his free throw shooting, see, that's a nice, that's a nice move right there, he sets the screen, cuts inside, excellent, I love everything about that play, everything about that play was well executed. Pick, he, he's a good pick and roll player right there. Cuts inside for the easy dunk after setting that screen to set up that play. He was a conductor on that play. So they're playing a zone defense right here, clogging the paint to prevent Wiseman. So right here, he's going to shoot the ball. Hopefully, I think it's going to be a miss. Wiseman got the offensive rebound. It's a foul on the ground. So that's a great possession, and he's going to go to the free throw line. So yeah, he has he has promise as a free throw shooter. I'm not too concerned there. He's an elite rebounder. I, I, I could say that. Off the bat, he's going to be an elite rebounder in the NBA, and that's going to be crucial for whatever team he goes on. The putback right there made up for the one earlier, but his rebounding skills are just off the charts. I think that's the best facet of his game so far. Mid-range, long two. Um, I think I need to see that more consistently, but his form looked really good on that fadeaway. Yeah, once again, his rebounding intangibles, he has a nose for the ball. He just sees it and puts it back. I think that's the best facet of his game, his putback game, his rebounding game. Sets the screen right here. He know, he expects his teammate to miss, and that's the mentality you have to have. And he puts it back up. That's, there's nothing more I can ask for out of a big man. So bring the ball up. Uh, that see he got he was lucky to get away with a foul he was lucky to get away with a foul on this play but you do not want James Wiseman to bring the ball up to the court I I think we can get that out of the way right now he's not one of those centers um he has two guys closing in on him right here the easy pass would have been to this guy right here or back to Boogie Ellis but instead he wanted to get he got tunnel vision and he wanted to drive the ball inside against two perimeter defenders and that's just not going to work out they're going to pickpocket that every single time so he's going to the line once again I'm not really concerned about his free throw shooting all that much he's shown promise See, that was one of those missed free throws, but once again, I'm not too concerned. He's made them pretty consistently throughout this game. Set the screen. See, right here, he did make the he did make it, and that he did show great post skills. He did hop step, get between these two right here, but there is another play he could have made. I'm not saying he made the wrong play, but right here, you pause it. He picked up the ball, and he could have dished it out to the perimeter shooter right here. I'm not saying the play he made was wrong by any means, though. So right here, when he, he was set on the ground, 
brings the ball up the court. Right here. Right here. He could have taken a look, seen that guy, but he probably made the correct decision with his body, with the strength. He knows that he could put that up um, over those two defenders, so I'm not too worried about that. He is known for getting tunnel vision, though, so maybe that's an area of concern, but on that play, I think he made the right play. There was two right plays he could have made. I think he made one of them. Cut from earlier. A mid range shot. Got to see more of that if um, I want to know if he could be a serious mid range shooter moving forward. See, in the first half, significant improvement. I love to see it. In the first half, he had zero points, five rebounds. Quickly improved in the second half to 14.7 rebounds. That's what you like to see out of a player. When they struggle, you bounce back. I love to see that. Really looking forward to see some more of his defensive game. We've seen a lot of his offense. He's standing out in the perimeter. The game's over. So the game is over. Um, on that final play, I guess he should have stood out in the perimeter. I'm not sure about his three-point shooting just yet. But overall, in this performance, before we move forward, um, I would give this performance a B- minus from James Wiseman. Um, he did impress me a little bit with his finishing skills, his rebounding, but on the defensive end and his tunnel vision, that's just, so far, that I'm not really impressed with that much. But we're going to move forward, see a little bit bigger sample size from him. This wasn't the biggest sample size, as I mentioned earlier. His college career was very limited. But I'm going to rate this as a B- minus performance. It definitely wasn't what I was expecting, and he could have played much better to his standards. The second game we're going to be breaking down here was a high school game from James Wiseman. So keep in mind, this isn't the most recent sample size, but it's probably the best competition he's ever played. He is going to be going up against a top three recruit from the 2021 class and a fellow center in Evan Mobley. So look out for that key matchup as you're seeing on the side of your screen. It's going to be James Wiseman versus Evan Mobley, who I'm also very high on. I'm also very high on Evan Mobley. So we're going to see the battle of two... Um, pretty highly rated big men, so it's going to be an exciting game. We're going to take away from what James Wiseman is doing, not necessarily Evan Mobley right now. We're going to see James Wiseman's strengths, James Wiseman's weaknesses, and if we see any improvement moving forward and what he could really improve on as a center. So the game is just about to get underway. Evan Mobley versus James Wiseman, Memphis East. Versus Rancho Christian. Yep. So once we once again, oh, okay. So once again, we do we do see that excellent rebounding prowess from James Wiseman. He's an excellent rebounder. I think anyone who's watched a game or just seen his statistics rebounding wise knows that he's an excellent rebounder. He boxed it out at his opponent very well. So he gets it right here. He sees three guys are guarding him. One, two, Evan Mobley, who's considered a really good defender, and three. Now, there's not really a pass for him right here, an open pass. You can't pass to this guy. The other guy is guarding right here. And number two will close out on number zero. Um, number 35 is just out of the picture. So right now you have one, two, three, four. I'm guessing there's another guy right here. But right here, I think you have to put it up if you're James Wiseman. Just Evan Mobley got the shot. Let's see. Yep, he had no chance. So I, I don't really blame him for that play. He had one guy who was guarded. They, they just closed on him too quickly. Let's see when he got that rebound if there was a chance to kick it out. Immediately. So he had a chance. He had a chance. Right when he got the rebound, if he had saw 35 and got it to him. Um, let's go rewind a little bit. So when he gets the rebound right here, pause, sets his feet on the ground. See, that's the problem. He immediately took the dribble um, and brought it back up. He probably could have dribbled it out. I don't suggest it. But on this play, I'm not really blaming him too hard, hardly. It's a split-second play. The only thing you could do is put it up in that situation, and I thought he did the right thing. 
Evan Mobley just got the block on it. So right here, you see once again, you can't pass to him. Just use just use your physicality. Maybe you could suggest that right here, um, he could have tried to go up and under under the basket, but I can't really blame him too much on this. See defense. We didn't really get a good sample size of defense on the Oregon game. Evan Mobley is an amazing shot blocker, but we'll get to that another day. See, that's a, that's a block he should have gotten. That's a block he should have gotten right here. See, Evan, he uh, he played good defense until that point, but right here, Evan Mobley was just about just got his hands a little bit outstretched over Wiseman's. Um, he could have gotten that block, but yeah, that's pretty much my takeaway from that play. You see that once again, he could have gotten the block on it, but it is what it is. Good finish. Stay in the paint. Ooh, okay. Okay, I'm pretty sure they'll show a replay, but we'll rewind it right here. So, he comes from the help side defense. I'll show this angle once again. Um, so, he comes from the help side. He's guarding Evan Mobley, and he sees that this guy is going to beat... Um, right here, he sees he's looking right at him. He has the eyes on the ball and with his defender. So he sees that this guy already has the ball gathered in his hands. So he's going to cut over, use his extensive reach and ex athleticism, and he's going to go and block the shot. That's excellent. That's an excellent help defense play from James Wiseman. See it once again. Flashy block. I'm more. I like the fact that he even saw that in the first place. Picked up on it immediately. That's what I'm impressed on. Not necessarily the block. Even though that was a pretty flashy block. So yeah, James wasn't involved in that play. So. Once again, just running up the court. I mean, not much we could take away from that. All right, he has the ball in his hands. So that that's, that shows signs of the mid-range game we saw in the Oregon Collegiate game he played. Um, he took that over Evan Mobley, which is an impressive shot, considering the fact that Evan Mobley is a good defender himself. Um, so that I, I was pretty. That's an pretty impressive shot. He has good form. We just need to see that more consistently moving forward. He looks like he can develop a good mid-range game, though. Ooh, I like that. I like that. Let's see if there was a better play he could have possibly made on that play, just to make sure. But he made it, so we can't discount what he did. So, right here. See, now he could kick it out to the shooter right here. He could. Because he sees this guy is also closing out on him. So, there was a better basketball play he could have made than that dunk. Passing it out, getting the three to a shooter. If he misses it, he misses it. It's a good basketball play. He made the open pass for the open shot. But at the same time, we can't discount the fact that he made it. But there was a better basketball play he could have made on that same play. That's impressive, though. Finishing through contact as well. Is there anything we could take away from his floor spacing right there? See right here, he he could come around right here. He sees Evan Mobley is actually tailing right here. Evan Mobley on number zero, closing in on him. You have two guys guarding right here. So James Wiseman could take advantage of his smaller matchup, come over, set a screen, probably get his guy a better shot, um, even though his guy probably should have um, pass the ball to the tailing guy right here for the open three. 
Um, in terms of James, James Wiseman on this play, he could have done a better job spacing the floor, but this wasn't really on him. Lob threat. He has a good lob. Um, that, he had a, he has a good lob radius. Went up for that lob pretty easily. And that's what you expect for someone with that much bounce and that much reach. Mm, that's we. Wh what does that remind you of? What does that remind you of? We just saw it earlier in this video. The first play of the Oregon versus Memphis game. What did James Wiseman do? James Wiseman bited on a pump fake. He bited on a pump fake, which allowed his the guy he was guarding to get a very easy open layup. We'll see it once again. He does it on Evan Mobley right here. Evan Mobley is going to drive. He, he tried to switch out on the perimeter. He switches out on the perimeter. A um, little bit of hesit hesitation right here. See, he's gonna. he thinks Evan Mobley is going to shoot it, so he hesitates a little bit. Evan Mobley has a little bit beat, but James Wiseman recovers with the strength. And then he stays in front of him. However, he jumps. He jumps. That gives Evan Mobley every advantage in that play. Once he jumps, Evan Mobley has an easy way to get the ball into the basket after that. Just another thing. He bites on pump fakes too much. That's not something you want to see out of your top prospect. Right here. You see that? He jumps. Evan Mobley has all the, all the air. And the help defense. See, back-to-back -back plays. So, right here, they're guarding. Um, there's one guy on that side of the court. Um, they're guarding right here. They're playing um, pretty much man right here. So, once they're playing man, James Wiseman has to be the help defender. Unlike the other play where he saw the guy cutting right here, this guy is going to cut right through the lane. has a wide-open path. Evan Mobley sees what's going to happen. James Wiseman's not even looking at him or at the ball. So, right here, he sees it, but it's far too late. He probably could, with his outstretched hand, get a block on it, but it was far too late. He needs to be better on those switches. And another thing on that um, Evan Mobley pump fake, um, James Wiseman's hip rotation could have been a lot better if he got his hips in position. Um, that probably would have been prevented before Evan Mobley could have gotten the drop on him. I don't think Wiseman was even in involved in that play at all. Yeah, he wasn't. So back, back in the game for the start of the third quarter. We see that three ball? We see that three ball. So yeah, he, he looks like he can develop as a shooter. Um, a lot of people says he, he has a shot equipped, but we're not sure how it's going to translate. I think he can develop into a good shooter. Um, his mid-range shot looks nice. I've seen it a couple times. Maybe you want to see it more consistently. His form looks really good. So once we see it more, get a bigger sample size of his capabilities as a shooter, then we could put more faith into him as a shooter. But right now, we can't his, we can't deny that his form looks really good. And from what he showed from the free throw line, from the mid-range game, and just recently what he showed from the three-point line, his form does look really good as a shooter. So he's switching on this play. That was a bad defensive possession from James Wiseman, and let me tell you why. So right here, uh, so he sees 35. That wasn't a great screen, so he sees 35 stick with number three. So he rotates back onto Evan Mobley, but once he kicks it out to the wide open shooter who made the shot, um, 
James Wiseman lost all rebounding possession, and that just can't happen. You need to be able to secure that defensive rebound. You cannot allow a guy as physical as Evan Mobley, one of the best centers in high school basketball, to get position on you on this rebound because once he does, he is already he has you beat. He has you beat. So once he has you beat, he is going to get that rebound, and he's going to put it back in for an easy two in a situation where the shooter misses. But luckily, he didn't. I'm not sure if that's luckily because that's three points given up. Um, but James Wiseman, this wasn't a great defensive possession as he was beat on the box out by Evan Mobley. There's no reason why he should be looking there. He could be looking there while trying to box out Evan Mobley. So he brings the ball up to court. So they're sticking to um, their zone defense right here, um, just rotating. Help defender right here. I love that. I love that. So he broke down the zone. He saw that there was a guy staying inside while he was laying off this defender right here. So he got the drop on Evan Mobley. Um, we saw this instance in the collegiate game, except there was two guys on him. I don't like it when there's two guys on him, but right here, there's a guy relative to his size, so he can get past him with his drop step. So the spin. Sees a guy, maybe he could have passed it to number 35 for the easy cut, but he gets past him. Number 35 didn't cut, so there's no opportunity for there. Maybe number one is wide open, but right here, I, I'm not going to knock him on tunnel vision too much since he made the shot. His footwork re looked really nice. Um, he got past Evan Mobley, the initial defender, and then the help defender, number Isaiah Mobley, um, right here, his brother. So once he got past the Mobley brothers right here, as you see on this drive, we'll rewatch it. Had some little bit of technical difficulties, but um, once he got past the two Mobley brothers, he put it up. That was great footwork. I did mention that there was a couple plays he could have made, either rushing it out to number one, the open shooter right here, or number 35, who didn't necessarily cut but should have. Um, but that was a good play. His footwork was really nice. His drop was really nice. That was a good shot. That should have been caught. He has to have better. And, uh, actually, no, that's not James Wiseman. And that, let's see if he could have had a chance to block this shot right here on the fast break. Yeah, he could have, but it is what it is. Not going to knock him too heavily on that. That. That's a horrendous play, and that's what we've been accustomed to. Um, he wants to get into his point guard. You see two defenders. Luckily, he does get past this guy. This guy's not much of a factor, but he gets to tunnel vision right here. There is no reason he should have drove this ball. Could have kicked it out to number two, open shot. I don't even like him driving in this situation anyways. Um, I don't like him bringing the ball up to court whatsoever, having the ball at the top of the key unless he's on a catch and shoot, but... He drove the ball. They're all closing in on him. The defensive attention is clearly on him. And so if he doesn't get tunnel vision right here, this is an easy basket or an easy opportunity for his team to capitalize on. You see, his defender is going to cut. Number one is going to come in, easily go help. And Evan Mobley didn't need the help. But number three is right here for the open shot. That should have been a pass to number three. The Biggest knock on James Wiseman's offensive game is his tunnel vision. He gets way too carried away with the ball, and potentially in a destination where he lands up in Golden State. You need to be a passing big to operate in Golden State, and that's just not going to cut it. So I'm not sure if he's going to go into Golden State or not. That's what it's looking like. But if he wants to fit in in a place like Golden State or anywhere in the league, you can't get tunnel vision like that and just put it up with three guys coming in on you. You need to look for your teammates, see the best opportunity, and not try to play hero ball. I get that the game is close. It's, it's in the fourth quarter. Five-point game. 
but you in order to when the game is close you need to trust your teammates to make those shots and especially on a good shot blocker like Evan Mobley you don't you, that's just a horrible play that play once again so right here see uh, I'm not too mad that he switched Evan Mobley still right here but he could have switched on this help play but yeah number number 35 should have had that that should have been better defense on him that was oh there's nothing on Wiseman there I like that. I like that. Let's see what he does. Let's see what he does. I'm not sure what he's going to do, but I like the hesitation right here. He got Evan Mobley up in the air. He drove. Now let's see what he does. He has one, two, three, four guys closing on him. Number three, he can't see him. He's out of the picture. I get that. What's he going to do right here? I think the best play to make is you see four guys right here. Number 20 or whatever, he's laying off. Number 35 in the paint. I think the best way is to pass it over him and get it to number 35. That's what, exactly what he does. I, I love that play. I'll take that play any day of the week. That's exactly what he does. He didn't pass it over him like I suggested. He passed it around him. But either way, that was the same play I suggested. So I, I love everything about that. See right here, one, two, three, there's another fourth guy who's going to come in, and he gets the ball inside to number 35, around number three, who's already up in the air. He sees that this guy is up in the air, there's no point in trying to pass it over, his arm is going to get that, so my suggestion was wrong, he got it in, that's a great basketball play. That's what he should have done, and that's what I want to see from him more often. His tunnel vision often gets in the way of him getting the ball out to his team. But if he, if he was a little bit more passive, um, not getting into the hero ball type of play style, um, which, which we know he shouldn't get into, but if he trusts his teammates a little bit more, find those open reads and those open lanes, could be very good on the offensive end. He already is very talented on the offensive end, but he could take it up an even higher notch. And I, he knows that as well. He's attested to it. Now, now that was a horrible... I'm not, and that was pretty bad defensive play on James Wiseman's part. That was a pretty bad defensive play. And I'm going to tell you right. So, I want Evan Mobley. This guy gets beat. I don't know what he's doing out here. Granted. Now, I understand that this guy got beat. But this guy should be hustling to get over here to Isaiah Mobley. I'm not sure how good of a shooter Isaiah Mobley is. But... James Wiseman, you're a center. Your matchup is Evan Mobley, the best player on the court for the other team. He's dropping back to the paint right here. You cannot allow that to happen. I know you have to guard up on him, but you're just allowing an easy two. And I know threes are more valuable than two, but this is this guy's man. This is this guy's man. You could play up on him until that point. See, right here, this guy is frozen. Evan Mobley has every possible way to get into the lane this is an easy two all day he took a little bit of time but this is an easy two all day and it's because Wiseman came out onto the perimeter um maybe this guy could have came and helped on Evan Mobley instead of him but you're giving up an open three and so in that situation I think Wiseman should have just settled and went to the best player on the court Evan Mobley you want to prevent Evan Mobley from beating you. Let the other guys beat you, but you can't let Evan Mobley have an easy two. That's just going to kill you, especially when you consider the time on the clock. Even when you give up a three, it's still a three-possession game. When you give up a two, it's a three-possession game. So either way, it's a three-possession game, couple scores. Um, that's just not a great basketball play. You're two minutes in the fourth quarter, 51-56. So let's see it once again. So... Right here, he catches the ball, easy two, easy two. And it's too late before Wiseman gets there. Let's see what he does. Hey, that, that, I'm not too mad about that defensive play. He caught up on the air, 
Maybe he could have drawn a charge. I'm not sure. I have to see it once again, but he contested it. That's all you could ask for. He contested it. Actually, actually, I got that better angle. I got that better angle. Let's see what he, what he could have done better. Let's see what he could have done a little bit better. So, both are up in the air. He stopped right here. If he gets up here, probably tries to take a charge. He jumped. Both are in the air. Evan Mobley just has that reach. Evan Mobley got the... Um, got the momentum going forward for him. James Wiseman just couldn't get to it. Yeah, that's pretty much what I take away from that play. So, again, um, Evan Mobley has to be James Wiseman's number one priority. I understand that this guy is right here, but on switches, James Wiseman, um, his hip rotation on switches, um, just knowing the defensive IQ on switches it hasn't been um, to what his standards has been, like what he's held to um, by these big recruitment sites. Um, he's not really great on switches. So right here, you see number 35 is right here. You see number 35 could trap him or get to him. You see this guy right here. There's no reason James Wiseman, this guy, I don't know what he's doing. He probably could come out to number three. But James Wiseman's initial focus has to be Evan Mobley right here. This guy just got an easy pass when James Wiseman got to him. When James Wiseman got to him, he sees Evan Mobley is cutting back inside, inbounds, and he's going to get the easy drop because Evan, uh, James Wiseman lost all possession, all position on Evan Mobley on that play. On switches, he's not done a good job in this game. I've not been very impressed with his defense either. So he's taking the ball up the court. Let's see what he does. So yeah, he just uses his body. It's a good play. It's a great play. 56, 66. This game is over. So final score, Rancho Christian beat Memphis East 66 to 56. Evan Mobley in this game thoroughly outplayed James Wiseman, but we're going to talk about James Wiseman here. So um, let me go back. So James Wiseman in that game. If I could skip the ad right here. So, James Wiseman in that game. Let me just continue talking. But James Wiseman, in that game, he could have done a much better job in terms of defensively. I wasn't very impressed defensively. James Wiseman, had he was terrible on switches to me. Um, help defense, it was solid. He had that one great defensive block. But on other situations, um, he bited on pump fakes like we saw in that Oregon college game. Um... What else? On offense, his game could be a little... He could get tunnel vision a lot. I like that one play um, where he saw that he had four guys closing in on him, but he got it to the inside guy cutting in. Um, but we saw multiple instances in both the Oregon game and the Rancho Christian game. We just saw right now that James Wiseman had multiple instances where there were open shooters in the corner, but instead he wanted to drive it, and it did not result in a bucket. So the tunnel vision is a big knock on him. His switchability on defense is a big knock on him. Um, he bites on pump fakes too much. Um, tries to, He's a little bit block heavy, but in terms of rim protection, I guess that's what you need to do. But he, he could be a lot better. He tries to go for blocks a little bit more, but with his reach, with his 7'1 frame, he could be a lot better on the defensive end than what people claim he is. Just because you get a lot of blocks does not mean you're a great defender. Example, Hassan Whiteside. But in this case, James Wiseman, um, he has a lot of promise. That's what I'm going to say. He has a lot of promise to be a great NBA player. It's just I'm not sure he's going to live up to that promise as any everyone else is just claiming automatically. Listen, he is, he's a great talent. He has a great frame. Uh, there's just things he needs to clear up in his game, his offensive game and defensive game. Just um, getting smarter as a basketball player. He has all the intangibles, but um, the mental side of it, he needs to drastically improve on. Also needs to improve on um, his switchability and mobility. That's my main takeaways. Um, yeah, that's my main takeaways from James Wiseman. He, he has potential to be good, but I'm not really sure he's going to live up to it. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like and comment down below. If you want to see more, comment down below which player you want me to do a film review next. But thank you guys for tuning in. I'm out for now. Peace.